when I was thinking about what I wanted to talk about tonight um, and what I wanted to leave you with, uh, of, you know, the first thing, of course, was that everyone buys my book. But if that doesn't happen, that's still okay. What I wanted to do is, is actually is do two things that, that I think are important, whether or not you ever read, buy the book, or read anything else I've ever written. And the first one is to give you an understanding that instead of looking at death as something that is fearful and something to be avoided, is essentially looking at it as the greatest teacher for how to live. I think that's really critical. The second, and something that I think is very practical, is, well, let me ask you the question. How many people here know how to help someone as they're getting ready to die? No. It's not something we talk about. It's not something we discuss. And I think until now, it's not something that people write about. So what I wanted to do was to go over some things that I think you can do immediately. I mean, not that anyone in your life is currently dying, but these are very simple, basic things that can help someone as they're getting ready to die. And I'll just very briefly list them because I'll spend as much time as I can uh, covering some of them. And whatever I don't cover, we can deal with in the uh, question and answer period or over a glass of wine. There are a, a number of things, specifically 11, just very quickly. I'm going to talk about the importance of sitting with someone who is dying rather than standing and talking to them. The importance of creating a positive dying environment. Also understanding that as people die, life becomes simpler. The importance of listening more and talking less, which is something we all have difficulty doing. The importance of relying on more than words to communicate with someone. Not to be afraid to talk about death. The importance of forgiveness. To give thanks to someone who is dying for the impact they've made on your life. The tenth thing is to give legitimacy to private experiences. And the final, and probably the most difficult, is give permission for people to die. So let me go just a little bit to the beginning of the book. And this is just the, uh, the, the setup for the rest of the talk. My life is tethered to a number very few people have ever heard of. It's a Gleason score of seven. It's a measure of prostate cancer severity that ranges from a forgettable one to a terminal nine. My lucky seven places me on the cusp of living and dying. Despite having hormone therapy after the surgery, I know the treatment just prevents the cancer cells from growing. They'll be there forever, flowing through my body, waiting, and getting hungrier with time. They'll be back, not today or tomorrow, but someday. As I was trying to deal with my cancer, I read you know, a number, numerous of uh, how-to and inspirational books, and each one filled with vast amounts of information about how to live with cancer, how to accept it. And I found all of them hollow. I found that what I needed to learn how to live with the cancer was not more words, nor contemplation, uh, nor even insight but rather something much more direct. And I found that at the bedside of people who were dying. For seven years now, I've been a bedside hospice volunteer for children, adolescents, and adults. Okay. So that's my background. Um, and I, I'm still doing hospice, and I intend to continue to doing it. 